Hello, my name is Todd Baginski. I'm an 11-time SharePoint MVP and a partner and CTO at my company, Canvas. In this training module, I'm going to show you how to deploy SharePoint framework components to production systems. This is section three of the Deploy SharePoint Framework Components to Production training module. In this section, I will discuss how to deploy to a SharePoint CDN. In this section, we're going to discuss how to create a SharePoint CDN, enable that SharePoint CDN, then configure a SharePoint Framework web part to use the CDN, and finally build, deploy, install, and test a SharePoint Framework web part that uses a SharePoint CDN. To create a SharePoint CDN, first you need to create a SharePoint CDN origin. To do this, you go to the Site Assets Document Library and then create a folder for your CDN origin. Here you can see an example of where I've created a folder named CDN inside of the Site Assets Document Library. After you've done that, then you will enable the SharePoint CDN origin. This is pretty easy to do with PowerShell. First, you open the SharePoint Online Management Shell. Then you execute the following PowerShell commands to enable the CDN, set the CDN's origin, and return the CDN's origin ID. You can see in the screenshot here, these commands have been run. Notice the tenancy placeholder inside of the URL for the command new spo public cdn origin. You would replace that tenancy as well as the site placeholder when you run that command. Those placeholders are meant to represent that this can be done for any SharePoint online site and you just swap those values out to correlate to your own. You'll also notice in the second line in the PowerShell connect-spo service that tenancy placeholder is also used where you initially log into the site in PowerShell. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the output from git-spo public CDN origins. This shows you the ID of the CDN that you have created. Your CDN base path should be https colon whack whack public cdn dot sharepoint online dot com slash then the name of your tenancy dot sharepoint dot com slash your cdn origin id once you have that information you can then go into your web part code in the write dash manifest dot json file that file is generated for you automatically by the yeoman generator when you make a sharepoint framework project here you can see the CDN base path inside of the right manifest JSON file and where you'll need to update that to make your web part grab its assets from the CDN at runtime. The package the web part step is what comes next. You'll use the gulp bundle task to build, localize, and bundle the project. Use the package-solution gulp task to package the project into a .sp pkg file. Both of these PowerShell commands are shown here on the slide. The ship parameter build task creates a minified version of the bundle and then copies all the web part assets, including the web part bundle, into the temp slash deploy folder. You can see this in the bottom left screenshot on this slide. The .sppkg folder is generated in the SharePoint slash solution folder. You can see that in the bottom right corner of this slide. After you've bundled your SharePoint web part and created your web part package, you can then deploy web part assets to the SharePoint CDN. To do this, go to the site assets document library, change to the folder that you created for your CDN endpoint, and then upload the assets for your web part to that CDN enabled folder. Here you can see an example of dragging and dropping the two bundle files that were created when we built the web part into the CDN folder in our developer site. After you've deployed the assets the web part relies upon, you can then deploy your app 
that contains your web part to the SharePoint App Catalog. To do this, go to your Office 365 App Catalog site. In the left sidebar, choose Apps for SharePoint. Then upload the .spkg package file for the web part. Once the web part has been added to your app catalog, you can go to your Office 365 site and add the app you just deployed to the SharePoint app catalog. Finally, now that your app has been added to your SharePoint site and the CDN assets are uploaded to the CDN location, you can create a page on your Office 365 site and add the web part to the page. After the web part runs, Hit the F12 to bring up the Developer Console. Switch to the Network tab and verify that your assets are indeed served from the CDN. Here you can see that the hello-world.bundle file has been served from the SharePoint CDN indicated in the URL shown in the red box. Now I'd like to show you a demo of deploying web part resources to a SharePoint CDN. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to deploy the components that your SharePoint framework web part relies upon to a CDN. Before I get started, I'd like to show you the web part that I'm working with. This web part is available for you in the module for demos, hello world, web part folder. This is part of this training content and this lab manual walks you through these instructions. The first thing that I did was I opened up Visual Studio Code as you can see here and I opened up the terminal and changed to the directory where I have that hello world web part. Then I executed the npm install command to, to install all the dependencies. Uh, I actually executed this command twice. Uh, the first time I execute it, it takes a long time and it downloads everything to your local machine. It has a lot more output here in the command line window. Uh, I then executed it again here just to show you that I executed it and that's why the output is smaller because it had already downloaded all those dependencies. Once I did with that, I bundled my solution with this gulp task gulp bundle. The Gulp bundle task creates the bundles, as I mentioned in the slide deck, that you will deploy to your CDN. After I packaged the web part with the Gulp, or created the bundles with the Gulp bundle task, next thing I did was I ran Gulp package solution. This creates my .spkg file that I will upload to the SharePoint app catalog. You can see the output on what that looks like here. Here's the file that it created. SharePoint solution hello world dash web part dash cdn dot spkg. And that, that's the file that it created right there. So you may be wondering why does this have a dash cdn extension on it when the web part is named hello world dash web part. So the reason that we have that extension on there is because I made a couple modifications to this to make it clear which web part I was working with when I upload it to SharePoint. So the first place that I went to do that was in the package-solution file. And here I gave the solution the name with the dash CDN and the package path right there. I added dash CDN as well. So the next thing that I did after that was I have my package ready and I came to my app catalog for SharePoint and I uploaded that SPPKG file right here. So here's my hello world dash web part dash CDN web part inside of that solution that I just showed you in Visual Studio Code. After I did that, I went to my SharePoint site and I clicked add a app and I selected that app to add it to the site. Once that was done, I came to my classic page that I created here in SharePoint. I edited the page, and in the ribbon, I picked Insert Web Part, and I added my Hello World CDN Web Part. So here it is running inside of my classic page in SharePoint Online. If we look at 
the network trace here, you can see that the hello world bundle.js file is being served from my local host. This is because I have not yet edited my web part to deploy this bundle to a CDN. If I come back to Visual Studio Code here, the next thing that I can do is run gulp serve. This is going to run my web part and open it in the local SharePoint workbench. That'll happen in just a second here. Once it opens in the local SharePoint workbench as it's doing now, it creates a new browser tab because I already have my browser open and I can add the Hello World CDN web part here. So at this point, all resources from the web part are being served from my local machine. If we head back to Visual Studio Code, we can take a look at the file right here in the dist folder that was created when I bundled the solution. This is the manifest that describes where the bundles are for my web part. If you look in the internal module base URL property, you can see here this value is set to local host. That's why my bundles are coming from local host. Now that I have my web part deployed, I'm going to change it such that it gets its assets from a CDN inside of SharePoint. To create the CDN inside of SharePoint, first I go to my site assets document library and I created a new folder named CDN. After I created that new folder CDN, I opened a SharePoint online management shell right here and ran these following commands. First, connect dash SPO service minus URL, then the URL to my SharePoint admin site and minus credential dollar creds. That prompted me to log in with an admin account to my tenancy, which I did. When that was done, I have my credential and I am logged in to the system. The next thing that I did was ran this command, set dash SPO tenant minus public CDN enabled true. This turns on public CDN for that SharePoint tenancy. Then set dash SPO tenant minus public CDN allowed file types. And I specify the different file types that I'm going to allow this SharePoint CDN to serve. After I did that, I run the next command, new dash SPO public CDN origin minus URL. And then here is the path. As you can see in the top, it matches up to this site that I'm in, cand3.sharepoint.com slash sites slash SPFX dev slash site assets slash CDN. So that's the path to this folder I created to store my CDN. After I did that, I ran this command right here called git public CDN, git spo public CDN origins. You can see it here in notepad. Git spo public CDN origins returns me a listing of all the IDs and the URLs associated with the CDNs inside of my SharePoint site. When you run the command, your output looks like this. I've hidden a couple of them here with Notepad uh, since we use them for other purposes in our tenancy for development. So here you can see that it returns me the ID of that CDN origin as well as the URL that I've set for it. I'm going to use this now to point my web part to retrieve its assets from this particular CDN I enabled in SharePoint. Now that I have my CDN enabled in SharePoint, I can configure the web part to retrieve resources from it. To do that, I'll open up the write-manifests.json file right here. Then I'm going to add in the path to the CDN that I just created and registered in SharePoint Online and save that file. At this point, I'll turn off the Gulp server and I will rebundle my solution using the minus minus ship parameter. Then I will repackage the solution 
also using the minus minus ship parameter. Both of these things pick up the change that I made in the right manifest JSON file and tell the web part to retrieve its information from the new CDN location I created in SharePoint. The next thing I'm going to do is update the .spkg file inside of my app catalog. So I'm going to drag and drop the new one that I just created with Gulp Package Solution here and replace the old version. Now that particular SP app is going to point to the resources in the CDN. Now I go to the CDN folder that I created in SharePoint and I upload the files that were generated in the temp deploy folder by the gulp building and packaging process bundling and packaging process. I don't need the one that is a GUID, I just need the two JSON files, so I drag and drop them to upload them to the CDN inside of SharePoint. Now I can return to the page where I deployed my SharePoint web part and refresh it. When I refresh the page, looking at the traffic will show me that the bundles that I uploaded to SharePoint CDN are truly being served from there and they're not coming from localhost anymore. Scrolling up here, here I can see the strings bundle that I uploaded and notice the URL candy3.sharepoint.com slash sites slash SPF dev site assets CDN. So that one is definitely coming from that location on my SharePoint CDN now. Looking down further, I can also see my Hello World bundle file, which is also being served from the CDN in SharePoint. So that's how you enable a SharePoint CDN and also upload the files to it and then deploy your web part after you've modified it to serve files from the SharePoint CDN. In this section, we've discussed how to create a SharePoint CDN, how to enable a SharePoint CDN, how to configure a web part to use a SharePoint CDN, and how to build, deploy, install, and test a web part that uses a SharePoint CDN. You can learn more about SharePoint framework and all the things we've talked about here in the SharePoint Patterns and Practices. You can get to this via the URL aka.ms slash SharePoint PNP. There's a ton of code samples and solutions, reusable components, a lot of guidance documentation, and also monthly community calls that you can watch here to learn all about the SharePoint framework, SharePoint add-ins, Microsoft Graph, and Office 365 APIs.